Good evening and welcome to Straight Talk. We have a very special edition of our show tonight featuring a distinguished speaker who is here appearing at Cal State Long Beach. I'll be talking with syndicated columnist and author Arianna Huffington about the impact of the new media on politics. Stay with us for this fascinating conversation. Opinions expressed in the following program do not necessarily reflect the views of Charter Communications nor its sponsors. We recognize our obligation to present opposing points of view by responsible spokespersons. For information, please contact the director of program. She stands in the face of evil and will not lose hope or faith. America, the land of freedom, is still the home of the brave. So raise the banner, call the glory, let us join our fellow man. Straight Talk is brought to you in part by Southern California Edison. For over 100 years, life powered by Edison. The Press-Telegram, your local news leader for over 100 years. And Long Beach Magazine. Coastal living, city style. <laughs> Join us for tonight's edition of Straight Talk. And now your host, Art Levine. I'm Art Levine, Professor of Ethics and Legal Studies from the College of Business Administration. Our guest today is Arianna Huffington. Ms. Huffington is the co-founder and editor-in-chief of the Huffington Post and a nationally syndicated columnist. She has authored 13 books, most recently Third World America, about the decline of the middle class. She's a true pioneer in the use of the new media and has one of the most frequently cited media brands on the internet. Ms. Huffington is here as part of the CSULB Distinguished Speaker Series. Welcome to Cal State Long Beach, Ariana. Thank you. It's great to be with you, Art. We're delighted that you're here and uh, the topic uh, of your address here on campus is politics and the new media. I know from my own experience that uh, the new media has changed everything. And, uh, you know, we're a little show here, but our <laughs> signal is viewable all over the country. We're not CBS, but the word can get out. So, so there's a sense of democratization of the media with the, with, with the Internet. Oh, absolutely. It uh, really has changed everything. You know, you used to be able to um, express your opinions and have a platform only if you're a big name or if you own the printing presses. And now you can have a voice and you can break through the, strati the static if you have something to say that resonates with people. So the little guy or gal can, who has something to say can get his or her voice heard without being Rupert Murdoch. Exactly. And, you know, the, the use of social media, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, sharing what you have to say with others, has also revolutionized everything. You know, Will I Am recently said that people used to consume news sitting on the couch, and now they consume news galloping on a horse. Wow. You know, they don't just consume it. They want to pass it on, to share it, to um, add something to it. And, and that's what has been so difficult for many in the mainstream media to understand. They're asking, you know, why are people um, updating Wikipedia entries for free? Why are they um, adding things on the Facebook walls for free? Why are they blogging for the Huffington Post for free? And the truth is that self-expression for many people has become the new entertainment. You know, nobody asks why are people sitting on the couches watching bad TV for free? But um, that's changed. People are much more engaged in what they're doing. 
And this is a healthy thing for a democracy. I think it's incredibly healthy. Like with every um, new stage in our evolution, there are problems. I think the biggest problem is um, the people who hide behind anonymity yeah. to vent, to, um, to go for ad hominem attacks, basically to just completely um, screw up the conversation. And that's why at the Huffington Post we are very particular that we don't allow that. You know, we have not just the most advanced technology we can get to filter through comments, but we also have 30 human comment moderators wow. whose job is to make sure that technology is working or that they catch the things that technology didn't catch. And, you know, there are mistakes, but last month we had three and a half million comments. My God. One of the uh, challenges, of course, is finding the funds to uh, create the good content. I've always believed that content is king, and I think that ultimately will be true in the web as, as elsewhere. Uh, uh, many websites are what they call repeaters, and they don't originate stuff, but they take it from somewhere else and link it. Uh, yours, I know, has a lot of original stuff, and yet content is expensive to create, and I think ultimately people will be asked to and will pay for content of a site that they believe in? Well, here's what I believe. I believe that we are now living in the linked economy. In the linked. linked economy. And links are very valuable. And links can be monetized. So Links can be, be monetized. monetized. There's a value to links. I got to think. Go ahead. Well, here's what's happened. Let's say you... Uh, write an article for the New York Times, and we want to link to it from yes. the Huffington Post, that will basically drive more traffic to the New York Times that the New York Times can monetize. And as long as the aggregators or the curators are following fair use laws and they don't accept more than what is allowed by the law... But a link, a link means you, you, the whole article. Yes. But sometimes well, you can take a, a paragraph um, to uh, basically introduce your readers to what the article is about, or you can link out directly. You know, either uh, can be within. Is that the valuable to practice. the New York Times Incredibly. to have a one-paragraph reference about the article? Well, provided with a link? It, of course it is. Yes, we get hundreds of requests every day from mainstream media to link to their stories because it's incredibly valuable. Um, now. In our case, you know, we do three things. We do this kind of aggregation slash curation. Um, we have original reporters. And um, now that we've become profitable this year, we are adding to our reporting I team. saw that you got Howard Feynman, we who, got Howard uh, who Feynman. is uh, uh, one of my favorites. We got Peter Goodman from the New York Times, who's become our business editor. Now, does, that doesn't mean that they're leaving the other publication, but they're also adding... Oh, no, they're to, leaving. They're the leaving. Publications. Yes. They're leaving... Howard Feynman is now full-time with the Huffington Post. Really? He left Newsweek. Uh, Peter well, let Goodman. me just cut to the chase. <laughs> at some point, uh, with Howard Feynman's and that like, that, that, that are right at the top of their craft, it costs money to do that. Uh, won't you, at some point down the line, ask your viewers to maybe pay a dollar a week or a dollar a month, and you have 25 million unique visitors a month, and if you get just half of them, that's not a bad cash flow. Okay, let me give you an absolutely unequivocal answer. Yes. Never. Okay, Never. you heard it here. <laughs> you will not have to pay to visit the Huffington Post. Never. Our, our business plan uh, is entirely advertising-based. Okay. So it's basically, the um, bringing in advertisers, bringing in sponsors, bringing in sponsor-generated content. There are many new ways to bring in advertising on the site, but we're never going to go behind paywalls. Wonderful. 